A chef cuts open a lobster with a knife. Suddenly, white liquid spurts onto his face. He feels a little angry and leaves the kitchen. He asks the other chefs to throw the lobster away. The female chef cleans the cutting board and then throws the lobster into the garbage disposal. When she presses the switch to crush the lobster, white liquid also spurts onto her clothes, but she doesn't care. In the evening, the chef's body has an abnormality, and his hands keep shaking. He is difficulty breathing. The chef leaves the kitchen to get some air, but he can't walk anymore. He keeps gasping for breath and then collapses to the ground. Another chef also has the same symptoms. She is sent to the hospital, and the doctor is doing rescue. The chef's body keeps shaking, and he can't breathe. She soon dies. Patients appear one after another, which shocks the virologist Mary. When she knows that another female chef has been in contact with the lobster, she rushes to the female chef's home, but unfortunately, she sees the female chef already lying on the ground. Black blood comes out of her mouth, because she failed to prevent the tragedy. Dr. Mary is a little disappointed, but she knows that instead of being sad, she should investigate the reason to prevent more people from dying because because of an unknown virus. She goes to the restaurant to find out what happened, and soon learns that the lobster was purchased at a seafood market. Mary goes to the market to continue investigating the lobster, and she finds that all the lobsters seem to have mutated. Mary quickly reports this to the police, but at the same time, a car washer is making faces with the girl, but soon he feels unwell and lies down in front of the car. The driver is a little impatient and keeps urging the car washer to hurry up. Suddenly the car washer spurts a mouthful of black blood and then collapses to the ground and loses consciousness. He is quickly rushed to the hospital for emergency treatment, but by this time, the hospital has been filled with patients. More and more people have the same symptoms, and the condition seems to be out of control. This accident has attracted the attention of the government, and various experts come to this small seaside town to investigate, because Dr. Mary was the first to know about the virus. She has a lot of clues. She thinks of the restaurant manager saying that the lobster was thrown away by the chef in the garbage disposal. After the lobster was crushed, it was photographed into the sewer. Dr. Mary thinks that the virus has penetrated into the city's water supply system through the sewer. That s why a large number of residents get sick. Dr. Mary is very worried about the situation getting out of control and also worried about the health of her family. She buys a box of pure water and then calls her husband and children to stay away from the coastline. Don't he drink any water of unknown origin. Then, Dr. Mary continues to study the virus. She also posts related questions to the world. She hopes to get some help. Soon, she gets some new news from a marine biologist. The marine biologist is named Sigur, and he and his colleagues are on an all-exploration ship. However, the exploration task is not going smoothly, and an unknown marine creature is hindering their progress. Those are some white worms that have astonishing reproductive ability. Because two days ago, the area of the white worms was only 50 square meters, but soon, they have spread all over the ocean. Scientists catch some white worms for investigation. The results shock everyone, because ordinary white worms don't have jaws and teeth, and they don't have such an exaggerated reproductive ability. This is likely to be a mutated worm. Sigur and other scientists plan to continue observing these worms. After 24 hours, they find that the white worms keep drilling into the ice layer at the bottom of the sea. If they destroy the structure of the ice layer, the all exploration team will face a work stoppage. This will seriously affect the interests of the all company. At this time, there are some contradictions between scientists and the all company. The all company orders the exploration not to stop, but Sigur and environmental protection expert Tina don't want to destroy the ecology, and they strive to obtain the consent of the all company. They plan to break through the ice layer to find the reason why the white forms keep drilling into it. The machine keeps going deep into the ice layer, but suddenly the exploration ship starts to shake. A large amount of gas pours out, and waves form on the sea surface. The ship is so tiny in the ocean, soon the scientists find the reason. Because after the machine breaks through the ice layer, some methane gas is released. The methane gas causes waves on the sea surface. But fortunately, not much methane gas is released this time, otherwise, the waves will swallow the ship, and even cause a tsunami. Sigur and Tina are shocked, because if the white forms destroy the ice layer, all the methane gas will be released. This will cause a great disaster. Sigur doesn't dare to hide the truth, and he reports the white forms and methane gas accident to the company company's management. The management received news earlier that many unusual things have happened in the ocean. For example, whales attack humans, and shells multiply rapidly. And now, a large number of white worms have appeared at the bottom of the sea. He knows that things are not simple. He passes the picture of the white worms to another regional head, Mr. Wote, because white worms have also appeared in the ocean area in charge of Mr. Wote. The old company realizes the seriousness of the matter. 
and they order all exploration ships to stay away from the area where the white forms appear, and they hope that Sigur and Tina can investigate clearly as soon as possible. However, the accident still occurs. A research ship encounters a violent fluctuation on the ocean. The whole ship shakes violently. Immediately afterwards, many waves appear on the sea surface. Eventually, the entire ship is swallowed up by the sea. Two scientists on board die as a result. This makes scientists all over the world sad, especially Charlie, because her good friend is on board. Charlie is originally on duty in a remote research institute. After learning that her good friend has passed away, she immediately returns to the research institute headquarters. She wants to know why the calm sea would suddenly swallow her good friend. Soon, they find the wrecked research ship, the underwater robot transmits back the pictures, and it is getting closer and closer to the sunken ship. Charlie thinks of her good friend in the cold sea water and begins to cry. But soon, they see a shocking scene, because behind the wrecked hull, a silver light suddenly flashes, but in a short period of time, everyone cannot investigate what the silver light represents. And there are still many tasks in the research institute waiting for Charlie to complete. She decides to return to her own research institute first and wait patiently for the investigation. Results? After saying goodbye to the leader of the research institute headquarters, she returns to her own place, but whenever Charlie thinks of her deceased good friend, she is very sad. Charlie once again opens the communication video of her good friend before his death. At that time, her good friend is on the research ship, but this time, Charlie makes a new discovery. She sees the same silver light flashing outside the window. She even hears some strange sounds. Charlie immediately contacts the leader of the research institute headquarters and reports the situation to them, but at this time, the leader of the research institute, Layman, is very busy. She is discussing Discussing the harm of white forms with Sigur, Charlie's sudden interruption makes her a little angry. Layman asks Charlie to select important clues to report. However, when Charlie talks about her speculation about the silver light, Layman feels disdainful. She doesn't believe that a massive light would cause serious harm. But Charlie also investigates more clues and relates to the white worms and methane gas they care about. Charlie collects the locations of several methane accidents. She finds that during the period when the accident occurs, the temperature of the sea water would suddenly rise. This is the reason why methane gas erupts, not the white forms that were previously speculated. Charlie seems to want to overthrow the research conclusion of some scientists, which makes Layman even more angry. She leaves her seat angrily. Sigur persuades her to calm down a little, because there are many uncertainties in science. They need to constantly put forward conjectures and then constantly verify them. This is the meaning of the existence of scientists. Sigur's words are very reasonable, and Layman also accepts his advice. Soon, they reorganize the data and start a new study. Sigur is getting some help, because the director of the port company is providing him with the phone number of Leon, a marine biologist researcher, since they are all studying the problem of mutations in underwater creatures. He hopes that scientists in different fields can communicate more. Sigur is getting in touch with Leon. Leon is sharing the research results of whales and shells with Sigur, even including the silver light he recorded when examining the whale. Sigur is very shocked, because not long ago Charlie reported to him the situation related to the silver light. After careful comparison, they believe that these silver lights are the same, but they can't confirm how it is produced. They are gradually beginning to agree with Charlie's point of view, and Sigur is deciding to let Charlie take a look at these materials as well. Soon his helicopter is coming to Charlie's research institute and is sharing the video of the whale at the bottom of the sea with Charlie. Charlie is firmly believing that they must go to the bottom of the sea for a more detailed exploration. Sigur is highly approving, but the ocean is a mysterious and dangerous place, and they need to be well prepared. Sigur is going to return to the headquarters of the research institute to prepare for the underwater exploration. However, before he leaves, an accident has already occurred, a tsunami is suddenly coming, and Charlie is keeping running towards Sigur's helicopter. Just at the moment before the wave comes, the helicopter successfully taking off. They are escaping this crisis, but there are many unfortunate people, and Sigur's friend, Tina, an environmental protection expert, is passing away in this tsunami. This tsunami is also damaging many seaside towns, and more than 1,000 people are missing. And there is a greater danger in the seawater, which is making Dr. Mary very worried. She is discovering a new kind of bacteria in the lobster, which has polluted the water area. And now, due to the tsunami, the seawater is spreading to many places. A bacterial disaster seems about to break out soon and Dr. Mary has to develop a medicine as soon as possible to protect people. She is applying to the government to prohibit residents from using tap water. At the same time, everyone is staying
staying away from the water area, that the officials are not caring about Dr. Mary's proposal. Mary is feeling very helpless, and she needs more evidence to support her theory. She is deciding to continue the investigation. It seems that the marine ecology and marine creatures around the world are undergoing mutations. Scientists are doing their best to investigate the truth, but for now, their progress is not very smooth. What kind of stories will happen to them next?